This is a model I built to showcase a locking mechanism inside a bank vault door. It's known as a group 2 vault lock and it was very common in the late 19th century and well into the 20th century. The blue tab on the side serves as the bolt for the lock, so when it's extended like this, it's in the locked position. You can unlock it using the dial like this. So in this video, I'm going to get into how this lock works and how I built it. The files are available online if you want to build one for yourself, so stay tuned. The combination is input by spinning the dial, and I've included instructions on the front here, including the combination because this is more of a learning tool. The idea is to get this blue tab on the side to retract, so when it's extended like this, that means the door would be locked. To unlock this, we're going to start by spinning the dial counterclockwise at least four full rotations, and then we'll stop on number 37. Then we're going to spin it clockwise two full rotations, past 37, and continue until we get to 10. Then we'll stop and spin it counterclockwise one full rotation all the way to 10 and past it until we get to 45. And now we've input the code. So to unlock it, all we need to do is spin it clockwise and the bolt will retract. Now let's look at what's happening on the inside as we spin the dial. The dial is connected to this green piece, which is known as a cam. And as it spins, each of the three orange wheels begin to rotate one after the other. The goal is to align the cutout on each orange wheel below this blue piece known as the fence. After all three cutouts are aligned, we can see that the fence is now being supported by just the cam. As we rotate the cam, this cutout on the side allows the fence to drop and the bolt retracts. Simply rotate the opposite direction to relock the bolt. So this project is actually sort of a half step to my next project in which I'm going to build a small bank vault door with an actual combination lock. And I actually did this more as a test experiment, but it actually turned out to be pretty interesting. So that's why I've decided to make a little video and publish the files. Um, it's a cool teaching tool and it seems like a, a sort of interesting thing to just put on your bookshelf. And, you know, if anyone gets curious, they can learn how a bank vault door works. So now I'm going to get into how to actually put this thing together and you can go over to printables and download all the parts for free and assembly should just take a few minutes. If you want to make one of these, all you need is a 3D printer and some super glue. And the one caveat to that is you will need a 0.25 millimeter nozzle if you're going to print these pieces that have text on them because you can see it gets pretty small and there's no way around that. So. Uh, as long as you have a 0.25 millimeter nozzle, you'll be able to make this. Um, I did my best to avoid support material, and for the most part, I was successful, but there is a little bit on this sled here, which is very easy to remove. Just take some pliers, there we go. And then there's some on the back of this plate piece, which you can see is already kind of falling off, but it's still off. All right, we have three wheels at the heart of the locking mechanism and I've printed them in orange PLA for this model. But the important thing to know for now is that each of these is a unique shape. So I've added an indent at the top near this notch on each of these pieces to indicate a number. So that's number one, there's number two, and here's number three. So the important thing to know for now is that wheels number two and three have a cutout on the back. So we need to take one of our pegs that we printed out separately, and I recommend you use a brim to print it. And we are just going to glue the uh, glue these into the back of the wheels. So it's important that these wheels can spin smoothly because when we go to turn the dial eventually, uh, if these have any obstructions or anything keeping it from rotating smoothly, the dial is going to feel that. So I've added a tiny little recess on the inside of this circle. And I recommend you, uh, when you're going to slice this before you print it, you paint the seam in that tiny little crack. That'll keep it nice and round for the opening itself. And you can see eventually when you go to install it, it will be able to uh, rotate very smoothly. All right, so now that wheels number two and three are all done, uh, it's time to start putting these into the frame. So the number on the wheel corresponds to the order in which they should be installed. So. Wheel number one should be put in first. So you just take the frame and you put wheel number one on there. It's important to make sure that you can see the indent indicating the number uh, when you put it on. If you can't see it, that means it's on backwards. So again, 
put on wheel number one and make sure that you can see the indent for number one. Then we're going to take frame ring number one. Uh, and you can tell the difference because frame ring one is actually shorter than frame ring two. So you take the smaller of the two uh, frame pieces and you align the grooves with the, uh, with the column in the middle and that slides right on. Then we're going to take wheel number two. Again, making sure that the indents indicating number two are facing me. I'm going to put it on frame ring one. So next I'm going to take frame ring number two and do the same thing I did before. Just add it to the center column. It will align with the notches and kind of lock it in place. Now I'm going to take wheel number three, put it on the top and take the frame ring cap and align it. And there we go. So depending on how tight all of the pieces snap together, you may or may not want to add a little bit of glue to the little crack that's running down. And I'm actually going to do that for this one to lock everything in place. While I let the glue here dry, I'm going to finish putting together a few other pieces. So uh, you can take what is called the sled here, the arm, which go together like that. And then you take this cap to snap everything together. And depending on how tight this is, you may or may not need glue. So this one snapped on pretty tight, so I don't think I need glue. But the important thing to know is when you hold it on its side, this little arm extending off of the arm piece should be facing the same way as this tab. So you can see um, this is what it should look like. All right, I've waited a few minutes and let the glue dry on this frame. So. For the most part, assembly is almost done. Um, next, I'm going to take this arm piece and slide it into the corresponding slot on the frame. So this is actually going to act as the bolt of the lock. That's when it's locked. And that's when it's unlocked. And I'm just going to leave this in place for now. So you're going to want to leave it um, with it in the track over to the left and with the arm facing up. That'll keep it out of the way. Next, I'm going to take my cam here and slide it onto the rod on the back frame. So you're going to want this to be able to spin freely because that is going to be what the dial is attached to. So if you're getting any friction or any high spots or anything, uh, now is the time to sand it down on the shaft. So you really want this thing to spin freely. So with the cam on the back frame, I'm going to just insert everything together like this and should just snap right in so yep there we go um, I'm gonna add glue for this one and again depending on uh, how tight the fit is uh, you may not need glue So the back frame is glued on now. You can slide this arm into place like that. And now we just need to add the final few pieces. So I'm going to start off by taking this dial piece. And you can see there's an, a square hole with a notch in it. And that notch aligns with this notch on this cam. So you can only put on the dial in one orientation. And that makes sure that the combination will be the same always. So I'm going to add a little bit of glue to secure the dial to the cam. You just want to make sure you have a good connection there. Now I'm going to take this plate, which I've already removed the supports, leaving just um, two pegs on the back. And I'm just going to snap it into these holes on the front here. Again, feel free to use glue if you want. Um, and I'm just going to let this uh, sit for a minute and let all the glue and the little dial piece um, dry.
All right, so the dial's on there, nice and smooth. And the last piece is just this little arrow. So we add this last, just right on top there, making sure that the blue, that um, you just push it as basically as far to the edge as you can, um, and then it will be in the right place. So again, you can glue that if you want, but uh, it should be tight. So we are all complete. Here we are. So there you have it. The locking mechanism is actually pretty simple and putting one of these together for yourself is not difficult. If you're interested in making one of these for yourself, I'd love to see a photo on printables and please let me know in the comments if you have any thoughts, suggestions, or questions. If you like this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing. I'll be posting more videos in the future. Thanks for watching.